So, hello, we are back. Uh, I wasn't really going to do any video instead. I've got to remember where the camera is because I'm holding the phone in selfie mode on a very cheap, janky selfie stick that is very wibbly wobbly. Um, we're currently on the River Bewer and we're heading towards Ramworth Dam at the moment. It is incredibly busy with boats and traffic. There's a lot of yachts. I don't know if you can see, oh, we've lost those boats behind us. But we've got four boats ahead of us. I don't know if you're going to be able to see by me just quickly turning the camera around because I can't see what you can see at the moment. <laughs> we've still got the bow lady with us, still. and um, run away, she hasn't <laughs> run away. She did go for. Uh, she was going to do a six-mile run, but you only managed four point three miles. Um, She's lost the neck, hasn't she? Um, so anyway, we overnighted at Acle. We went to the bridge in uh, for dinner, which was very nice. And then this morning we uh, went to June's Cafe. Now, that's the first time I've been there. And to be honest with you, if this was a, like a Facebook group, like Love the Northern Broads, God forbid you ever mention food on there but I can because this is my channel so I will and I was disappointed it's £9.50 for the full English you get a sausage, two rashers of bacon, a fried egg, hash brown, tomatoes and a slice of toast coffees are extra so for two full English, two white coffees, £26 I don't think that represents the best value for money and in fact I think what actually have been better is it wasn't really trying that hard as in, you know, like, oh, we get our fresh butcher sausages or bacon, you know, dry cured from some farm. It, it was just probably, you know, Brooker's catering sausages, eggs, bacon. So um, sometimes it's not just about the quality of the food. It was served on an annoying rectangle platter rather than a, uh, sorry, I'm, 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 I must look there. Uh, yes, anyway, so a rectangle platter that wasn't warmed up, so because that cooled down the um, the breakfast very quickly. Uh, the the coffee came out of the same machine that you get in Weatherspoons. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it's not, it's nothing too fancy about it, if you know what I mean. And I just felt that the price, £3.50 for a coffee, on top of £9.50 for a breakfast, either could have been better quality more of it or just a little bit cheaper because everyone on the broad seems to be wanting to you know really take advantage uh, of the tourists basically and I get that I see that but um, you know I'm sure if Dunes Cafe was to comment they'd say something like do you know what our costs are do you know this you know our utility costs rent all the rest of it um, and, and I would say, okay, then lower the quality of your, your ingredients so that's cheaper to buy in. Because how does a cafe in London, for example, with London rates, manage to do a full English, say, two sausage, an egg, two bacon, chips, beans, two slices of toast and a coffee, Lavazza, for, say, £6.50? How's that possible? and make money doing it it's not the best sausages it's not the best bacon it's not the best beans it's just good enough it's a cafe so maybe i'm being a bit cruel there but you know if this was on like love the rules or something i probably wouldn't say that because they say oh no you can't say this you know go to our food sister group where you can talk about food you can have on rules what I didn't know and I've just realised as well is the granary at uh, Ramworth does evening meals and I think that's great because that does represent good value for money. It's good quality food but it's an alternative to, um, to pubs and I think that that's really going to be the next thing is lots of people are drinking less, lots of people are not choosing to drink. It's no longer about the next pub. Where are we going to go? going to go to the next pub. What are we going to eat out tonight? A pub. 
And I suppose I should really then take back some of the criticism about Jean's Cafe because it's it's an independent alternative. It does, you know, breakfast and lunch. You can buy very basic provisions there, like kitchen roll, toilet roll, toiletries. So, yeah, okay, I'll take that back. I still think £9.50 for a breakfast, a little bit high. You know, 7.50, 7.99 maybe. Oh, he hasn't lost these controversial opinionated ways, has he? So anyway, we're taking it nice and easy now. We're in a five mile an hour section here. We're going against the tide and we're just doing 4.3 over ground. Not pushing on, saving a bit of fuel. Um, and it is a bit of fun and games ahead of us with the boats jostling for position. Uh, one of the Herbert Woods boats overtaking a Richardson's boat. The Richardson's boat is sped up. I bet they do that on the motorway as well. You know, when you're creeping up behind someone doing like 67 miles an hour and then when you just alongside them they suddenly go oh I'm only doing 67 they put their foot down so you tuck back in behind them and then um are you eating? yeah no it's a sweet it's a sweet anyway and then they slow back down again anyway <laughs> people eh funny old people and a lot of the time I don't think they're aware really that they're doing it or purposely or, or meaning to be bad I think they probably think oh I'm going a little bit slowly he's obviously trying to pass me I will speed up so he then he won't want to pass me because now I, I'll be doing the right speed but because they've modulated their speed with their right foot rather than just being on cruise control after a half a mile they've eased back off again and if you're on cruise control you've caught them back up again and then it does get annoying because then it's like well now I'm gonna overtake you anyway we don't know where we're going today by the way um, I'm actually you know what's the time now 5 to 12 do you know what people I tell you this when people say oh you know how far can I go what can I do on the broads this is our third day, we've had two nights. We've done Barton Broad, Potter Hyam, Wormat Water, Acol. We're probably going to do Sow House, Horning and Roxham today. Um, it really isn't that hard to see all of the broads. Yes, if you're going to go south, it takes a bit of planning with the tides and stuff. Um, but even so, if you've just got a short break, you can easily do Broxham, Horning, South House, Ramworth, especially if you're not stopping off and spending like two or three hours at a location. If you just stop off, spend half an hour at, say, you know, Ramworth, for example, pop into the shop, grab an ice cream, get a souvenir, come back to the boat, leave Ramworth. In a, in a four night short break, no trouble covering the broads. So I suppose you want to see what's going on because yesterday you saw what was going on but none of me and now there's a bit too much me. So there is my view. Uh, so just for people that want to know this is my speed through the water and my paddle wheel is not turning and it is not working. That's the depth at the moment taking into account the kill so that's actually not from the surface of the water that's from underneath the boat so you can add two foot six inches onto that figure to know the true depth of the river viewer just at Ramworth Dam, Ramworth down there this is uh, what the battery situation is 13.8 volts charging at 5.4 amps press this button here we only have to put eight more amps into the batteries or amp hours and that's why this is so good to have because it tells you what your battery charge is going in or when they're sat how many amps you're using or putting in how many amps you've used overnight and how many amps you um, have to put back in again and if I do that time it tells you 92% charged and we've got another 4.8 hours of engine running if we were to try and put 100% back into the batteries 
but remember an alternator isn't a battery charger it's more of a battery maintainer and um, it's why really having a shore based power supply and a shore battery charger that runs off that power supply is best because that will properly charge the batteries and then it will maintain a float charge which will improve the longevity of the batteries. Down here is my Garmin GPS which you can see is 4.3, 4.4 miles an hour and we're doing about 1400 rpm nice and steady at just about 78 degrees of water temperature just over two and a half bar on the oil pressure that's our engine cranking battery voltage and that's our engine hours Trix has done 2941 hours since 1992 which isn't bad going not a lot really for a, a boat of this age and obviously the silly little compass So I'm just going to ease off a little bit here because I don't want to overtake on a bend. <coughs> but we are catching up that little day boat. Maybe you want to see a little bit more out of the screen. And I think this is wide enough. and that should be good enough to overtake and enough room for anyone coming the other way and we're still not breaking the speed limit guys so that is where we are what we are i don't know what the rest of the day is going to bring is it going to rain i think it's forecast to rain at some point today i do like this boat they bought that off of barnes brinkcraft it was used to call superstar which originally was moore's and um, they've really made that look lovely as a private boat. So more as it happens. So here's somewhere you don't often get to see and lots of people seem to, to miss it out. This is Black Horse Broad, otherwise known as Hoveton Little Broad. Now it's not open all year, but it is open at the moment. And you would have seen earlier Apologies for the wind noise on the microphones. But anyway, um, you would have seen earlier how busy the Bure was, all the day boats, everybody else. If you go to South House, it's going to be busy. If you go to Rocks and Broad, even, um, you know, it's going to have a lot of boats on it. But here, there's only us and two other boats. And um, it is a really lovely, quite large broad. And you're allowed to mud weight. There is no shore access. Because as I pan round, you'll see that most of the uh, shore access is basically people's gardens. So very lucky to have this. I mean, you know, look out your bedroom window and you look out across your own sort of private lake almost. Oh, what a lovely outlook to have, especially if you've got your, your own boat and stuff. Uh, it is a bit exposed, a bit windy. And it leads on to Hoveton Great Broad, which remains closed sadly to navigation by the public but that's what's up through there I believe don't quote me on this but I think that's a channel that leads to um, Hoveton Great Broad um, which is one of the biggest broads um, and all that's a whole nother kettle of fish basically um, they wanted to put nets up to stop the uh, the bream from breeding in the broad because they blame the, the bream for problems with the water quality they've got a load of national lottery fund national lottery funding uh, and this is a private landowner that owns it and they've done all sorts of stuff and now they've got that mooring on the main river bureau where you can go on and walk um as a kind of consolation prize but it is a great shame i mean how much damage does boats actually do if they come onto a broad and drop a mud weight? Let's face it, I don't, I don't think it's much at all. But as I say, that's a whole sort of another argument and you know politics and all that. No one knew that. What I did want to do was just basically say this is a beautiful 
secluded, quiet place. So if you're at the right time of year and it's open, um, certainly consider coming here. If you don't need to get to shore and you haven't got dogs and stuff where you can mud wait. So we're not on the mud wait. We're just literally turning the engine off. We're just drifting with the, uh, the wind at the moment. So, um, but there we are. So first time Sheila's been here. Yep. I'm just looking at the map. <laughs> <No. laughs> what? I just love how we we roll. What? A phone holder for you. Phone holder for me. You know. Anyway. But yeah, I mean, just uh, I actually recorded a lot of uh, the the blog the other day in widescreen because I thought, oh, that that really gives you a nice wide angle. But it changes the audio. I think. I think when when the audio is is so we're just going to do a little test here so i'm going to carry on talking so this is widescreen or wide angle lens and i'm going to carry on talking as we now transition to the normal lens and um, now we're going to carry on and we're going to go to three times lens and uh, i think you will find that the audio will have changed as i go through these different camera views which i don't quite understand but that's the apple iphone way Oh, I was going to talk to you, and I think this is a good opportunity to, so bear with. So I've just come down below, and this is the other equipment I brought with me. And I just wanted to just say, you know, how things change and evolve. Um, so this here is, is my second blog camera. The original blog camera that the blogs were done on um, was left out overnight on Far Horizon, and it survived. And then I was so excited that it survived, I dropped it. And then broke the lens and bought a second one of those um and then i upgraded to this so this is an uh sony system camera an alpha 5000 or an alpha 6000 i'm not sure um but this is interchangeable lenses and at the time and this cost an absolute arm and a leg to buy a few years ago um it's got digital image stabilization but not a patch on what what this iphone is i mean I'm juggling this around and it just damps it so so much um there's a bunch of stuff that doesn't work on this anymore because the websites to which it directs you are no longer supported by sony um and it's a really good still camera very slow autofocus for video work but that, that well, so many blogs were filmed on that this is one of my original um action cameras um that's still going it's had a bit of the wars and stuff um this is my original mount that i had on the outside of the boat would leave this on overnight you can see how it's been damaged by the sun uv and stuff but it didn't go rusty which is interesting polaroid mount but this battery just doesn't work doesn't hold charge really that's why I'm doing what I'm doing on, on my, my phone. But I thought I'd just, a little bit of sentimental stuff in there. Um, that I just grabbed literally from home in the little container it lives in on the on the shelf as well. This was a Poundland buy that, that relies on a sticky, washable thing that you just stick stuff to. Very quite good. Um, I wouldn't trust it for a heavy camera on the outside, but as a quick and cheap phone holder... Yeah, brilliant stuff. So there we go. So basically, we are going to... Oh, look at that. Albion's come to join us. So we're going to get underway again. And head, carry on heading towards our house. So, uh, but yes, Hoveton Little Broad, a.k.a. Black Horse Broad. Not quite sure the reason why they've got two names. That's where we are at the moment. If you don't know where we are, where have you been? This is South House Broad. This is the path where it leads up to the car park. And uh, we came here, we moored up and I paid for overnight, but we've had a little consultation and um, we're not gonna stay overnight. We're probably gonna head back up to somewhere closer to base, AKA Stellum, 
we will uh, can easily eat out eat out sorry eat on board we've got food on board to eat then we can take the boat back clean it through do all what we need to do get in the car tomorrow go somewhere have a nice lunch and then head home um, rather than staying here and then having a long cruise tomorrow just to get back to Stalham which will eat into what we could do bank holiday Monday as far as possibly going somewhere you know further afield in the car and also um, in all honesty when you're moored stern on like sardines or like South House, Ramworth, Wormat Water etc um, you do tend to hear and understand every last thing that your neighbours either side are doing, what they're saying, what they're watching on the TV. And um, it's, it's not my sort of thing, to be honest. I prefer a quiet out of the way mooring. Um, and also, because we can't have that good a signal in South House, so that means we can't task, we can't stream Taskmaster, which uh, Sheila absolutely is into. And I, and I have to admit, yeah, I got sucked into it a bit as well. So, <laughs> yeah, needs must. But we did, however, take a beautiful walk up to the, um, the car park. Um, so yes, uh, six pounds, I think he said was the day rate. Twelve pounds overnight. Two pounds for an hour. Two pounds for an hour. One fifty for an hour. They do take cards, but we hadn't even tied the ropes before he was standing waiting to take payment, which uh, is a bit different to the old days when they'd come out pretty much, you know, do a little walk round once every couple of hours, and uh, at the end of the day to collect people's dues and write them down on a little notepad. Now it's all done on the tablet and POS software. I mean, there has been investment, which is good. Uh, there's a play area. There's this new net thing that you lay on to look at the clouds and the night sky. Uh, there was a little ice cream kind of uh, trailer. Also takes card payments, um, which is really essential, to be honest, these days. I won't use somewhere that doesn't take car payments half the time because I haven't got cash. Don't have a wallet, don't really carry cash. Nine times out of ten, I use Apple Pay on my phone. I've got a pound coin in the car for a trolley at the supermarket. Um, that's me. That's also a lot of people. Um, Sheila's train tickets, for example, all bought, paid for. On the phone in an app tickets digital tickets sent as a file to Sheila to share into her Apple wallet so that she could then use them on the train you know I know I know I know lots of people don't like it but it truly is easy no paper no printing no queuing no ticket office just I want to go here, get the tickets, and off you go. So we'll have a little look at what's moored up. Just uh, trying to get into this, this old filming malarkey. It's very, I mean, I should have probably filmed when we got here, when we were walking up, and I'm just not thinking. The old uh, brain is, is still switched to, um, you know, doing what everybody else does, enjoying themselves, relaxing, looking around. Look at the traffic today, though. I mean, it was busy yesterday, but it really is. Day boats, picnic boats, private boats kayaks kayak seems to be the big thing now inflatable Sheila wants an inflatable kayak considering considering 
can I just point out by the way broad sunray 2 look at the quality this this is not a new boat and that has been really well polished and presented by Richardson's I'm sure you can hear a lot of wind noise there going on here but yeah just obviously spent some real time I think they've tinted the windows I don't remember those being tinted that is a beautiful crown 37 broom there I like the colour of those, it's sort of a grey, but it's, it doesn't age. Gosh, that would have been Broadland Tango once upon a time, that boat there. Yes, it's still called Tango. Brilliant. <laughs> slow down. It gives a thumbs up, but doesn't slow down. And it is important to slow down because, look, you've got a lot of people in the water around here. So... I've never actually seen this. Um, does it have a price list here? Okay, so moorings. As you can see, two fifty six pounds and twelve pounds canoeing one hour, eighteen pounds for an hour. Kayaking fifteen pounds for an hour. Camping fifteen pounds. Firewoods eight quid. Extra car pass space. Hmm. I would say that uh, they know how to make some money. So this is what we could get, one of these, like that explorer there. Yeah, because the Athlon is on sale bits of the summer, yeah. essentials. Camping, yeah, this right? is like the thing now, everybody's heavy breathing, but now they're just pumping up their uh, kayaks. Oh, hello. Got the trip boat coming in now. He says. There's a starboard. Yeah, there it comes. Queen of the Broads. There was a debate recently over on the Love the Norfolk Broads Facebook group where someone enjoyed a two hour long trip from Alton Broad and it cost them £18 each. And people were expressing how expensive this was. And I said, because I can't not wade into an argument. Um, well, it is, yes, because you could go from Westminster Pier to Greenwich in London for £14. And of course people said, no, that's London, you can't, you can't, da 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 da. So uh, I, I had already researched my reply, which is to say that a two-hour trip on Queen of the Broads from Wroxham is £15.50, so still less than the Alton Broad trip and more facilities on board. So I still think that the Alton Broad trip, like... Uh, among other commenters, is expensive, 18 quid. Um, but there we go. And look how busy this is versus Alton Broad. And why, why is it? Had, did you know, do we see much publication of the fact you can take a two-hour trip from Alton Broad? I, I don't really. You know, it's so vital to... It's not about having a website anymore. It's not about having leaflets, it's about interacting, get on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, interact with your followers, keep pushing it. Do little, you know, bring a family of four, quote this code as a Facebook follower, save 10%. It's that sort of thing that, that really goes a long way these days and businesses, you know, Broads Tours knows it, but the chaps are on Broad not. But there's me and opinions and controversy again. My God, I can't help it, can I? How do you put up with me, Sheila? I don't know. I'm just enjoying the view because I, I wish like I can join them now. Yeah, you can. Go and spend your 15 quid for an hour in a no, canoe. No, because now I'm and considering I'll... to go on um, shopping spree in the castle <laughs> now. Shopping spree. That's my way of doing it there. The, the gentleman that's just laid down. No, don't get back up again. Just enjoy it there. <laughs> it looks funny. 
stupidly because then you can put everything in front of Trixie or any boat you have, put them all in there, bring your own pump, just pump it all up. I can bring my own um, wetsuit. Ooh, now we're talking. <laughs> any activity, I won't say no to that. Maybe that's the only reason why you can bring me on the boat then. <laughs> as long as you pack my wetsuit and my dry robe afterwards so I can get dry. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That's what you call fun. None of those driving for hours. So, talk about good luck. Bank holiday in August and we've managed to moor in Horning Stave. Just literally came around the corner as a private boat was just departing and I said, is he, go he is going, he is going, oh my God. There was about four boats behind us. Quickly turned around because the, uh, the tide is um, heading out again at the moment. And um, we managed to get alongside before a day boat got in, tied up, I haven't even had time to put shoes and socks on or anything, help this day boat more up and um, yeah, I, I mean when was the last time I moored here? So she's got somewhere to go and walk, we can go out in the evening, um, yeah amazing, so what a great end to the day, um, so really good because this will quieten down really nicely later on. But um, I think that'd be a good end for this little bit of a captain's vlog. So I haven't actually edited the other bits of video that I uh, filmed yesterday on the phone. I don't know how it's come out, but uh, from the bow lady, aka the Black Pearl. Black Pearl? What's that mean? <laughs> well, we've been thinking about pirate names and <laughs> Pearl of the East, Black Toe. Black toe! <laughs> Don't embarrass my black toe. Leave my black toe out of this. Um, yeah, it's been a bit of an impromptu, a uh, bit of a captain's vlog. I haven't been used to doing all this malarkey with cameras. How's it been for you? Annoying with your camera, yes. Annoying. Oh, well, you're supposed to be supportive. No. Anyway, oh, no. No. Right, well, anyway, that has been. A bit of a nice time i'm going to go wide angle and look at that the weather's just starting to change could be some rain coming in on the way trixie's been performing brilliantly um i just need to uh, clean the fenders clean the water line and um yeah otherwise she's uh, looking good and is very comfortable we even had to use the heating just for about half an hour this morning, just to take the chill off. It's the first time I've actually used the heater properly. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant compared to the old Ebba Special. Hotter, more airflow, more controllability. Brilliant. So, from Horning, not in the morning, this has been the Captain's Blog. Hold everything because I had to just record this moment. We have walked to uh, the new inn and as you can see the heavens have opened and we are under this table parasol and then I've got the umbrella up over me because <laughs> we're that desperate to drink <laughs> and everybody else is deserted where we're here. <laughs> um, they haven't got any tables, unsurprisingly, for, for eating, but I think that's, I don't think that's quite true because they don't accept live phone calls um, and they don't accept any bookings after three o'clock for that evening. They direct you, want to do it online. Um, and that unfortunately is because this is corporate culture now, even on the broads. Um, I'm not sure if it's heritage pubs or heritage inns. I know vintage inns um, own the Swan. But that's not really the point of this video, really. Um, how typical is this for a bank holiday with the, uh, the weather, though? But this is probably 
the busiest if not you know one of the top up there you know weekends of the year the, the august bank holiday weekend we've had some beautiful weather i know it's turned now but we have had some you know lovely weather and here we are horning on the norfolk broads not only did we get in at the stave if you look here there's a birth free well there's at least two 12 foot stern on berths there you'd get another boat in here there's another two available there so that's five boats that could be accommodated here and the time currently is just coming up to quarter to five so pretty much the people that are going to be here are going to be here they, they've come for the for you know the evening kind of thing and what i was just saying to sheila was is we came past here obviously on the way down to south house and instead of this you know beautiful sunny day instead of this all being full up with people it wasn't there was hardly any um cruisers moored outside it was mainly day boats um they packed the day boats in this little basin here and that area there where that um x um silver line boat is had day boats on it but over here we could have easily have stopped and moored up um, but we didn't because that's not what we were really wanting to do and I think you know this has been s spoken to death about on forums on Facebook groups and everything oh you know the Norfolk rules has changed look at the, the lack of bookings this year and how quiet the rivers have been earlier in the year and all this kind of stuff but if you want to see how things are here you go um, the pub I just pan around here the undercover seating area there's well they've just got up they're just having a drink there's another family there just on the left so that's not all full um i feel a bit of pity and, and wonder and just ah oh, because it's not just people aren't coming here on boats i think people's habits have changed you know the way they use you know the old good old riverside pubs that's changed um i've got a pint of guinness sheila's got um a diet coke and that was nine pound fifty so it's cost to, to touch to some degree but i also think that there, there is a new generation of people a lot of younger people um you know 16 plus 16 to say 28 that demographic of people they're not how i was when i was growing up younger they're not all going out clubbing on the weekends they're not avid drinkers they're not like desperately trying to get a driving license for freedom and independence there are some there are thousands of people that are of course but but there are in that demographic you know probably about i don't know three million people in that age group they're not clamoring to do all of the things that we used to do and you can look at graphs and statistics online and, and see that for yourself year on year the amount of people drinking in this country reduces and um, you can see the establishments that are closing you know you can look at <laughs> recent study has, has come out that the French government 200 million euros to support the failing wine industry because people aren't drinking wine anymore so you know wine growers are converting to grow olives so it's it's blatantly there we are a changing society and this is part of it not all of it but you know 20 years ago if you were here at the new in Horning on a bank holiday weekend in august it would be packed and it's not anymore all of the boatyards would have their fleets out now now fleet operators are happy if they've got sort of you know 70 percent of their craft out you know that would have been that would have been a terrible time once upon a time you know august not 100 percent your fleet fully booked just unthinkable but it's how it is and some, some small yards are but 
I could go on and on and on, but you don't really want to hear that. But it, it gives me an opportunity to um, to share my opinions at, at least and show you, you know, what what is actually going on. And um, to be honest with you, you know, we've come to Horning. We, okay, so we've come here, we've got a drink. Went into the gift shop, she'd have bought a couple of little gifts, which I must say, very reasonably priced. You've got three pubs. You've got a seafood restaurant, which is often, you know, forgotten that that exists actually, to be fair. Uh, the cafe, well, that was closed. Then the other sort of cafe, the one I'm not so keen on, I did get an ice cream from there. He's wearing a latex glove that he uses to hold the comb. He also takes and gives me back the change with, what's the point of wearing a latex glove then? But hey ho. Um, but I don't know. It's it's you know when you think of like a riverside village, you you conjure up maybe in your mind, you know, a rustic little restaurant. You conjure up maybe a little deli that sells locally sourced goods and delicacies and oh you know wow isn't this yummy and lovely and all the rest of it and a uh, independent free house you know locals and travelers alike mixing shoulders and no no you don't get any of that anymore <laughs> so um shrug shoulders is what it is so a little addition i will be shutting up now and going and um Yes, it isn't like the old captain's blogs of old. Um, I, I accept and I know that. I have filmed this on a phone and we've genuinely been having a bit of a break and a holiday and I don't want to take over with filming and stuff. So, you know, but I, I wanted to use this as a way just to show and share and talk. And now I've finished showing, sharing and talking. So until next time, this really is the end for now more as it happens.